Hello, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, we're going to talk about how to graph a quadratic function that's in standard form. So what is standard form? It is this equation that we see right here, f of x or y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And so if we notice on the left, we have a parabola listed here. And on the right, we have some characteristics of a parabola. So if we think about our equation, ax squared plus bx plus c, the number that is in the place of a is going to tell us if the parabola will open up or if it will open down. So if a is a positive number, the parabola is going to open up, so our vertex will be at the bottom. And if a is a negative number, our parabola will open down, so our vertex will be at the top of the parabola. Another important aspect, c is the y-intercept. So whenever we see our equation, we can go ahead and plot 0 comma c on our graph. And once again, the axis of symmetry is x equals opposite of b over 2a. Um, we learned how to do find the axis of symmetry and the vertex in a previous video, and I will link that in the description below. And just like the axis of symmetry, the x coordinate of the vertex is opposite of b over 2a, and we can plug that value back in in order to find the y coordinate of the vertex. Okay, so let's do a couple examples here. The first one says graph f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. The first thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and plot the y-intercept. Okay, so I know the y-intercept is c, so that's going to be 0 comma negative 3. Okay, so we go ahead and plot that right there, 0, negative 3. All right, now let's find our vertex or our axis of symmetry. So to do that, we're going to say x equals opposite of b over 2a, right? So this is us finding our axis. So x equals, and once again, a is 1, b is negative 2, and c is negative 3. So opposite of b would be 2, and 2 times a is 2 times 1. And we get x equals 1, okay? So x equals 1. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a vertical line through x equals 1. But then I'm going to make it a dashed line. So if I'm doing this on paper, I'm going to go ahead and make that a dashed line just like that. And so now I'm going to use x equals 1 and plug that back in to find my vertex. So 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 3. So 1 minus 2 minus 3. 1 minus 2 would be negative 1. And negative 1 minus 3 would be negative 4. So this gives me my vertex. My vertex is 1 comma negative 4. So 1, negative 4. Okay. Now, if you remember the axis of symmetry, it is symmetrical, right? Or our parabola is symmetrical about the axis of symmetry. So if I have this y-intercept point right there, it is one unit to the left of my axis of symmetry. So I know that I also have another point right here, okay? Because if I reflect the y-intercept over the axis of symmetry, then that is where that point would be, okay? <clears throat> and so now we can take and draw our parabola through our three points, okay? And if we wanted to find a couple other points, we could pick an x value, plug it into our equation, and solve. Okay, so right now we're going to leave it as is, and let's go and find the domain in the range. Okay, so the domain is going to be all real numbers, because remember, domain is left to right, and so this graph is going to go left forever and right forever. But our range is going to be y is greater than or equal to negative 4, right? Because negative 4 here is our lowest point, and we include that point because so it's a closed circle, but then we go up forever, okay? All right, let's look at another example. <clears throat> Actually, back to this example real quick. Notice how a was a positive number. Our parabola opened up, right? That's a good place to start just to know if your parabola is facing the correct direction. Now, for example, number two, graph f of x equals negative 5x squared minus 10x minus 2. So here we see this negative here. Our parabola is going to be opening down, okay? So something where we have a vertex at the top. So now let's go ahead and plot our y-intercept. So we know that is 0 comma negative 2, because negative 2 is c. So there's our y-intercept. And let's find our axis of symmetry. So let's say x equals opposite of b over 2a. So a is negative 5, b is negative 10. So this is going to give us opposite of b would be positive 10, 2 times negative 5. So this is going to be x equals 10 over negative 10 and we get x equals negative 1. So now we can put our axis of symmetry 
through x equals negative 1, and we'll make that a dashed line. And now let's choose for our vertex, we're going to plug negative 1 into our original equation. So we're going to say the f of negative 1, and it's equal to negative 5 times negative 1 squared minus 10 times negative 1 minus 2. So we get negative 5 times 1, basically negative 1 squared is 1 times negative 5. This is going to become plus 10 and then minus 2. So this is 5 minus 2 and we get 3. So our vertex is the x coordinate from our axis of symmetry, negative 1, and then we plugged in 3. So negative 1 and 3. Okay. So now that makes sense because look where our y-intercept is. It looks like our parabola is going down like that, which is what we had hoped for because our a value is negative, which means the parabola should open down. So just as we did on the previous example, we can reflect our y-intercept over the axis of symmetry to get our other side of the parabola. Okay. So we have our vertex here, and now let's list the domain and the range. Just like the previous example, our domain is all real numbers. That's going to be the case the majority of the time when you're working with parabolas, especially if they're opening up or down. And our range now this time is going to be y is less than, and this will be, excuse me, less than or equal to, and this is through 3. Okay? So less than or equal to because we're going down, and the highest point is 3. Okay? So that's how you graph a quadratic that's in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c.